Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying these videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 19, Organisms and their Environment. Let's begin with the topic of nutrient cycles. First, we will learn the carbon cycle. Carbon is an important element which forms the main part of molecules in living organisms. The carbon cycle shows how carbon atoms transfer between the atmosphere and living organisms. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. That means the carbon is removed from the atmosphere. Next, feeding. Animals obtain carbon by consuming plants and other organisms. So carbon is passed through the trophic levels in a food chain when feeding occurs. Carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere through respiration by plants, animals and microorganisms. Decomposition of dead organisms also releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Formation of fossil fuels under certain conditions, the carbon in deceased organisms can transform into fossil fuels over millions of years. Burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas leads to the release of carbon dioxide in higher levels into the atmosphere through the process of combustion. Once again, here's a quick recap of the carbon cycle. Deforestation reduces the number of plants available to absorb carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. In many regions, deforestation occurs for land purposes and when trees are burned, additional carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. Next, let's turn our attention to the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is essential for life and is involved in the synthesis of amino acids, DNA and ATP. Microorganisms convert nitrogen into forms usable by living organisms including ammonium, nitrates and incorporation into amino acids and proteins. Nitrogen gas or N2 is present in the atmosphere. Plants and animals cannot directly use atmospheric nitrogen gas. However, certain bacteria have the ability to convert atmospheric nitrogen into usable forms through a process called nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen N2 into ammonia NH3 by nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil or root nodules of leguminous plants. Nitrogen fixation can also occur through the action of lightning. So here also the nitrogen in the atmosphere N2 is converted eventually into nitrates in the soil. Plants prefer to absorb nitrates rather than ammonia compounds through their roots. So once nitrogen N2 has been made into a compound of ammonia, it can easily be changed to nitrates by microorganisms called nitrifying bacteria. Nitrification is the process where ammonia is converted into nitrites and then nitrates by nitrifying bacteria, making them absorbable by plants. Plants absorb nitrate ions from the soil and use them to produce amino acids and proteins. These proteins are then available to animals which feed on the plants and digest the proteins in them. 
So animals get nitrogen by consuming plants or other animals and digesting their proteins. Decomposers like bacteria and fungi break down dead organic matter into simpler compounds including ammonium ions which are then released into the soil. Nitrifying bacteria convert the released ammonia into nitrates. Waste products from animals contain urea, ammonia and uric acid. These substances contain nitrogen in them. Urea is a substance that is excreted from organisms after a process called deamination occurs. Deamination is the process where amino groups are removed from amino acids resulting in the production of urea. Decomposers also break down organic matter in animal droppings into ammonium compounds which are converted into nitrates by nitrifying bacteria. Denitrification is the process where nitrates are converted back into gaseous nitrogen that is N2 by denitrifying bacteria in oxygen limited environments completing the nitrogen cycle. So denitrifying bacteria are found in soil that do not have much oxygen. They break down nitrates to nitrogen gas which then escapes from the soil into the atmosphere. So here's a quick recap on the nitrogen cycle you may pause to go through. Finally, let's learn about populations. A population is a group of organisms of one species living in the same area at the same time. A community is all of the populations of different species in an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a unit containing the community of organisms and their environment interacting together. The factors affecting the rate of population growth for a population of an organism are food supply. Food supply directly impacts population growth. When there is plenty of food, populations grow. But when food is limited, population growth slows down. Competition. All living organisms compete with each other for limited resources such as food, water and living space. Predation. Organisms that have more predators will grow slower in population as they are more likely to be killed by predators. And disease. Disease can cause a drop in population by killing organisms. In crowded areas, diseases can spread fast and wipe out a large part of the population. The sigmoid curve represents how a population grows in an environment with limited resources. This is a sigmoid population growth curve. There are four main phases of growth for a population. The lag phase, exponential or log phase, stationary phase and the death phase. In the lag phase, the population grows slowly as it adapts to the environment. In the exponential or log phase, the population starts growing rapidly when resources become more available. Birth rate is fast and death rate is low in this phase. During the stationary phase, the population becomes stable as the birth and death rates reach a balance, resulting in a relatively constant population size. This may happen due to resources such as food, etc. becoming limited and competition increasing. And in the death phase, the population declines as the death rate exceeds the birth rate, leading to a decrease in population size. 
population numbers can decrease due to inadequate food supply and other resources or the spread of disease within the population. That concludes part 2 of chapter 19, Organisms and their Environment. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye-bye.